Welcome to Still Standing. I'm Michael Caputo. Here we are in the beginning of the week where the FBI has been tasked by the President and the United States Senate Committee on the Judiciary to look into the uh, accusations against um, uh, Kavanaugh, Brett Kavanaugh, uh, for uh, Supreme Court Justice. I didn't want this. I, I think that this is just playing into the hands of the Democrats. I really thought, of course, when Senator Flake flaked, uh, that this was just playing into their hands. They're now going to find anything they can in order to delay this even more. Not necessarily stop it, because it's not clear that they can stop it, but the Democrats are really hell-bent on making sure that this nomination at least is dragged out past the midterm elections. It's not looking good for them in the midterms now because of their Kavanaugh strategy, but I just can't believe Senator Jeff Flake. Uh, he was sitting there, you know, you saw it on 60 Minutes Sunday night with Senator uh, Coons talking about how they're good friends and, you know, Coons was never going to vote for, for Kavanaugh under any circumstances. And Flake, I always thought, was going to flake. I never thought that he was really going to vote for Kavanaugh. He's not running for re-election. In fact, I think the fact that he's not running for re-election has something to do with this. I don't live in Washington. I live out here in flyover country in a little village outside of Buffalo, New York called East Aurora. But I have lived in Washington. I lived there for a long time, especially in the 80s and the 90s. I worked uh, in and outside of politics there. I worked in the United States Congress as well. And I can tell you, Jeff Flake is not going home to Arizona. He's going to stay in Washington, going to be a lobbyist. He's going to take a job at a big law firm in Washington. There's five or six of them that probably have bids in for his services as a lobbyist. And by agreeing to play ball with the Democrats, by playing footsie with Senator Coons, by having good, long, and you know, heartfelt conversations with the chief conspirator of this delay tactic, Senator Dianne Feinstein, Jeff Flake right now, I guess he probably doubled his salary at that big law firm. Because, you know, you're paid as a Republican lobbyist if you're a former U.S. Senator, but if you got access to the Republicans and the Democrats, you can make twice as much money. Take a look at Jeff Flake's bio on the website of any law firm that he goes to. It'll say something like this. Senator Jeff Flake, with unique access to both Republican and Democrat parties, is able to draw a consensus and blah, blah, blah. I don't know if Jeff Flake thought of this, and I don't know that his friends on the Democrat side of the aisle told him this, but I know how Washington works. So does Jeff Flake. <laughs> and he just hit the, uh, the swamp lottery by helping out the Democrats on this. And frankly, if you watch the 60 Minutes interview, you know that, that, uh, that Flake and Coons pretty much laid it out. If there's any you know, proof of his you know, in, you know, heavy drinking, and, and I guess the, the, exact com the, the exact statement was, if they find one misstatement or lie, whether it was about his drinking or, or drinking games, then he doesn't have the credibility to be a Supreme Court justice. So we know where they're moving with this. We know. There's no question. And if you look at the rationale that's coming out of you know, the Democrats on the Kavanaugh uh, ascension to the Supreme Court, you know that's what they're talking about. Here's another statement here. Klobuchar, really stunned by how he acted. Uh, and uh, Hirono and Kuhn, they both tell 60 Minutes, he had exchanges with Senator Feinstein and Senator Klobuchar and others that I thought went over the line. He's clearly belligerent, aggressive, angry. They don't even talk about how you know, he was called uh, evil by Senator Cory Booker, who, by the way, has his own Me Too problem from when he was about the same age. He wrote it up in, a, in an op-ed some years ago, I guess in 1992, how he groped a girl against her will. But he decided that Kavanaugh, for some reason, is evil. Senator Feinstein, in her questions uh, uh, in the hearing last week, talked about, you know, have you been involved in gang rape? Gang rape. Like Michael Avenatti's client, 
this woman uh, uh, that nobody believes is credible and isn't even being investigated by the FBI uh, alleged that, uh, that not that Kavanaugh was involved in gang rape, but he was there when it was going on. She alleged that she went to 10 different parties where there were gang rapes going on with young girls who were drugged or, or, or spiked drinks. And yet she herself went to 10 different parties like this. Completely incredible, not worth even the breath of Senator Dianne Feinstein, but she put Kavanaugh on the spot on something really ridiculous. Klobuchar too. All of them, all of these Democrats are absolutely shameless. And they're worried about how Kavanaugh reacted. I'd have really, really question Kavanaugh's sanity if he didn't react so negatively to these people who spent so much time, money, effort, and conspiracy to impugn his reputation, to ruin him and his family. If he just sat there and acted like a nice fella, I'd have thought he wasn't qualified for Washington anything in Washington. It's outrageous. Then you see this Comey op-ed. You believe that? You believe FBI Director James Comey writes an op-ed and says, basically very partisan op-ed, beats up on Republicans and sides with Democrats and sides with Christine uh, Ford. Of course, I believe Dr. Ford, something happened to her. I don't believe Brett Kavanaugh was involved. But Comey talks about what he called, what was it? The significance drives memory, he said. He believes that Comey lied. He calls it, uh, little lies point to bigger lies. <laughs> He's the one that should know about lying. And if significance drives memory, then how does Dr. Ford not remember much at all? She remembers Brett Kavanaugh, but she doesn't remember anyone else, at, at least the people that she says were there, say they have no recollection of it ever happening at all. If significant drives memory, former Director Comey, then you've just proved the case that Dr. Ford is accusing the wrong man. It's outrageous that uh, former Director Comey is even printed in the pages of the New York Times. He absolutely lacks any credibility at all. And I think it's hilarious that Democrats are embracing him after he seems to have really cost Hillary Clinton the election in 2016. Who knows if, uh, uh, if she would have won if James Comey hadn't you know, completely blown it on her and the investigation into her emails. I mean, if you look at it, they didn't do much of an investigation at all, and it was the whole investigation was being run by somebody who loves Hillary Clinton, Peter Strzok. I don't understand the Democrats. How they could look at Comey and give him any credibility at all, it's, it's just, it begs the question of, are they even sane? And if you look at Donald Trump's uh, rally, it was, I thought it was great. He certainly uh, nailed it when he talked about how the Democrats, at least, you know, at first were thinking that uh, Jeff Flake's uh, one week delay for an FBI investigation was initially good enough. And now they're all screaming about how it's not enough time. The president gets it. He totally gets it. Nothing, never, will ever be good enough for the Democrats on this. Their strategy is to ruin Kavanaugh and stop him. And if that means asking for more time after agreeing to a week, they certainly will. And you see it happening already. There's no question in my mind uh, that they'll push it beyond this. The next thing is, oh, wait, we need more time. Another anonymous accuser came forward. We all know that uh, uh, Clarence Thomas's investigation after Anita Hill came forward took three days. We also know that the FBI examined 650,000 Hillary Clinton emails in about three days as well. So I think the FBI can get this done in a week. And I know the rank and file FBI, I know a lot of people in the rank and file. I mean, forget about, you know, the, the people in the politically appointed uh, areas of the FBI. The rank and file, they know what they're doing and they can get this done. I've got to go back on CNN tonight, back on Anderson Cooper with Kirsten Powers, the woman who was trying to call me a misogynist and a racist, got me all worked up. <laughs> I'm not going to take the bait. I'm not going to happen again. All right, well, listen, thanks a lot for tuning in to Still Standing. I'm Michael Caputo, and I'll be back again real soon.